What I want to do today is talk about black and white and uh, just walk through a few slides initially and talk about what are our goals for the, ses the session and then really get in. And I think you're going to enjoy what I have planned for you. Um, so jumping to my slides, um, re really it's about trying to create better black and white photographs. Because the trick is we can all do black and white, but how do we make them better? And then the other thing I think to, to, uh, to think through is to ask this question. Let me see if my slides are hiccuping here. There we go. Ask the question, why black and white? And I was at a conference recently, and I asked the audience that question, and one guy gave me this great answer. So I'm going to repeat what he said. He said, for me, there's a pureness about black and white. The lack of color encourages me to look beyond the subject matter and experience it in a new way. Can anyone relate to that? And then he keeps going. He says, so that even a commonplace object or commonplace subject can take on added depth. There's so many layers of texture, shape, pattern, and light and contrast that exist in a color photograph, but are sometimes difficult to discern when there's color. And so what I love about black and white is you get beneath the surface of things. So I have a camera up here just to remind us that what we're doing, this is about photography and how do we communicate and convey, and how do we kind of get beneath the surface and create stronger black and white photographs. All right, next slide is just a couple of pictures. What I find interesting about black and white is there's a stillness and a quiet to those kind of images, like with these portraits of a few different friends. Sometimes I think black and white can be more poetic. Uh, poet is, or poem is just a reduction, right? It's a simplification, but it's not just reductionist, it's, it deepens. And so I think it can have things like that. And I think that black and white can work in so many different types of photographs. And so the goals for this session are four. I want you to walk out of this one knowing how to use Lightroom and some of the Adobe Camera basic controls. Learn how to work with selective adjustments to bring attention to certain areas or, or to darken other areas. Look at the grayscale controls, batch processing, speed up what we do, and then work with Photoshop as well. So those are the goals. Um, these are some of the things that we'll be doing, and it just is more kind of letting you know we're going to work a lot in Lightroom and some in Photoshop. And so that's kind of the gist of this one. Before we begin, a couple things. One, inspiration is so important. I threw some names up here of a, of a just mix of black and white photographers. Ansel Adams, of course, Anton Corbin, Richard Avedon, Irving Penn, Elliot, er, Elliot Erwitt. Sebastio Salgado, Paolo Reversi, Rodney Smith, a mentor and friend, Michael Kenna, amazing landscape photographer. And the reason why I want to want to do that is what happens with black and white a lot for us is that we tend to convert to black and white. You know why black and white? We tend to convert because the colors didn't work very well. Have you ever had that happen? My color doesn't work, or you're so frustrated and you just get rid of it, um, which isn't always bad. But wouldn't it be great if we could have more intent? and say, well, no, I'm trying to do something like this. And I want to, you know, this is a photographer I really like. I like, Ant if you don't know Anton Corbin, he just, his blacks are so deep and rich, so much contrast. And that's refreshing or maybe freeing. Because sometimes in digital imaging we say, don't do too much contrast, you know, make sure you have detail in your blacks and your whites. But sometimes there's a place for that, sometimes not. So anyway, come up with your own list. What black and white photography do you like so you have something you're going towards? So that's really important. And then also answer that question, why create it? And then I also have just a couple things. My um, stuff, chrisorwig.com. You can find all kinds of things about me. And I have other tutorials, lynda.com slash chrisorwig. All right, let's begin. And I want to begin with um, a photograph of my daughter, Annie, here. And I'm going to just minimize a few things here to set up Lightroom a little bit better. And... Almost there. This is a picture. Isn't she cute, by the way? Um, I wanted to illustrate this idea or create a photograph that illustrates the idea that education doesn't only happen in school. So there's a field behind her house. I brought this old vintage desk out there, and she dressed up for it. It was really fun. So with this image, going black and white to it, and just illustrating a couple things about getting into our tools. Also know that as I do this stuff, what I tend to do is progressively get a little bit deeper. So I'm not going to start with like advanced everything right now, but that's going to come. I want to, I want to get there. So anyway, with this one, what we tend to do when we go black and white is we just remove color. So we desaturate. The thing I think most people forget about is that color temperature affects how that's going to look. And we can see this more when I go to a, an image like this, and I'm just going to desaturate and change my temperature. Notice how like the reds 
and the blues and, and all that's changing. So you have to realize that's connected, right? Color temp, why is that? So let's bring back the saturation. Watch when it goes to blue, look at the red. It's kind of pale and a little bit lighter, but if I bring it up here, see how there's more density to that area? So really getting good at black and white is about thinking about these density and also the, the densities and the relationships. And then there are, of course, other controls. So with this image, rather than using that slider, I'm just going to reset these, double clicking them. I'm going to encourage you with everything I have to press the V key, V for victory, for better black and white. So V key goes to black and white via the black and white panel. We'll get to that. You can also do the same thing just by clicking the treatment button up at the top. So again, V for victory. So I go there, and the reason why I'm going to go there is because I'm going to need a little bit of help with this image. First, let's crop it, though. R key for crop. And composition is so important. And that's why I want you to look at people's work that you like. It isn't just removing color, but it's crafting images. So I crop it. I'm trying to get in a little closer, a little more focused on her um, sitting in this desk. And the next, we obviously will do things like we'll say, well, what about contrast? I can add more contrast. Clarity. Clarity is mid-tone contrast. It's texture. And color images, when you bring this up, you lose color and things kind of fall apart and can look too strange. Black and white's much more friendly or, what is it? It, it likes a lot of clarity. So, so even with this image, I'm going to go to 100. It's not horrible. If I were to go to 100 on a color image, you'd be like, oh my gosh, like what'd you do? You're trying, it's trying to be HDR, but it is, or I don't know, it's confusing. So anyway, with that, a little bit of clarity and maybe a touch more than you're comfortable with. And, and just, just some kind of some, you know, adjustments as far as where we're going. And then the next thing that often helps in black and white, as in other places in, in Lightroom, is to work with virtual copies. And I've mentioned this yesterday, so you, you guys remember that. But this idea that we can have these virtual copies to have different iterations. So I want to do that with this image. The reason why I wanted to show that slide is just to illustrate that it doesn't add file size. In Photoshop, when you create new layers, you're adding file size. In Lightroom, when you create a new, quote, layer via virtual copy, um, you just have this little text file. It gives you all this flexibility. So does anyone remember the shortcut? I love the shortcut to create a virtual copy. It's Command plus apostrophe. That's on a Mac, Control apostrophe Windows. Want to write that one down. Iteration in photography is so helpful to find the sweet spot for the image. So in this case, going down to that black and white panel that we've already really activated with the V for victory, what we can do here is say, well, I want more light on her face. And I'll talk more about skin tones and stuff. But you can see how what I can do, uh, make it look really bad, or I can also make it look really good and bring some brightness up there. And what happens with black and white, some people just use the black and white panel. Some of my students, I'm like, whoa, whoa, you got it. The basic panel and the black and white, those two together are, are, the, are the magic. Even temperature. So I'm going to go on my temperature slide and notice how I'm whitening the face here. Look at that. I couldn't, I couldn't get all of that if I were just working with the grayscale. So knowing all these tools, bringing them together, pretty cool, right? That's not history. So let me show you, you know, we started here. That was our first iteration. And when I was here, at least when I first did this image, I was pretty proud of myself. Yes, poetic and no color and good contrast. But um, the image needs to be more here for me to actually like it. So virtual copies at least help me in my own workflow. Another image. I'm going to keep going. Landscape photograph. Um, and I'm just going to hit full screen for a second. Landscape image with a road. So for me, this image is really about this road and the clouds. And this is a raw file. So what I want to do is go black and white. And so I'm thinking, Chris said V for victory. I'm going to try that this approach and just throw that on there. V for victory. Disappointing. And um, that's what happens a lot. Um, a lot of black and white conversions, the first step, you have to give yourself some breathing room. Just like when you open up your raw images, this happens to me where I open them up and I'm like, oh, it was so much more vivid when I was there, so much more expressive. But part of workflow is being an artist and saying, I'm going to commit. I'm going to see this image through. So what needs to happen is this, that there's an imbalance in brightness, right? Sky is too faint, the foreground's too dark, and the road is just kind of muddled. So those are, that's my strategy. So if I go down to black and white, and I'm also a fan of these shortcuts to go through the panels, I'll just say them. It's Command-3 or Control-3 goes down to that one, command zero through whatever number in any module gets those panels open and close. Black and white, that's important because I'm going to go back and forth between these two, right? Command one, command three, command one, command three. Anyway, here I am. 
sky needs to go down. I know the sky is blue, so a lot of times we'll just reach for that and we'll drop it. But what we can tend to do is miss something because there may be some aqua in the sky. If we grab the target adjustment tool and position it over, especially around the horizon, can you see my little aqua slider over there? Um, I'll just zoom in on it. It's dropped that down for me as well. And so, again, this tool just helps us kind of discover colors that we didn't know were there because often, even sunsets, it's very strange. Sunsets will have green in them if you, don't, if you look at them closely. And so, anyway, this gives us access to that. Great. So, I'm going that direction. I got my nice deep dark clouds building up some drama. I don't want to get too lost here, so I'm going to press Command or Control 1 and go back to the basic panel. I, I can't forget about all of these, you know, really powerful tools. I'm just walking through them, doing some basic stuff. And then that clarity just adds this definition and pop to photographs um, like this. And I think that's, that's better, right? We're going in that direction. If I wasn't sure about my next steps, I would create a virtual copy. So I'm thinking, I want to brighten the path more. I'm not sure if that's going to look good. I want to go back and forth between that. So I press Command apostrophe, Control apostrophe on Windows, Command on, on a Mac, and I grab the adjustment brush. The K key gives us access to the adjustment brush. And with this tool, um, I'll choose my exposure effects. And just to demo how this works for a second and look at all these controls that we have over here, we have our size, feather, and flow, which are really important, and auto mask. So size we can change with the slider or bracket keys, right bracket key bigger, left bracket key smaller. Feather, um, low feather is hard edge, a lot of feather is a soft edge. Flow is how fast the adjustment um, is built up. So um, I almost think of flow kind of like spray paint. You know, if it's just barely coming out and you go back multiple times, you're building up color. I mean, if you have a real high flow, it's just boom, there it is, it's completely on. Then auto mask, let me show you auto mask for a second. Shortcut for that's easy to remember, it's A key. So I turn the auto mask off and I'm just gonna make an adjustment, which I need to exaggerate here so you can actually see what it is. And this will not look good, but give me a second. When I make that adjustment, it's just everywhere. Um, undo that and even uh, delete my first little part. Tap the A key and make the same exact brush stroke. And while it is over the top, you can see it's limited to my path. So Auto Mask does a really good job at it finding edges and areas of contrast so that you can dial that in. So with this one, obviously we want lower flow and we want exposure setting, which is gonna be lower and I'm just gonna wing it. I don't know if that, that setting's right. I'm tapping the left bracket key, but I'm gonna go back and forth. Whoops, little mistake there, Command Z. And when you're working with light, I like to kind of move around a little bit so I'm not hitting one area too hard. And I also eventually, after I do all my auto mask work, um, and if it weren't a demo, I'd probably zoom in a little bit more, a little more detail, but this is fine for a demo. After I do that, I'm going to turn auto mask off and then I'm just going to get into the edges because what can happen with auto mask, especially with, with a landscape, is it can make the edges look a little bit too crunchy. And if a landscape looks crunchy, your mind doesn't trust it. And so part of black and white is you want to believe it. If you ask people photographs and they've done all these studies, the color and the black and white version of the image, they always believe the black and white more, even though we know it's just, you know, it's this weird psychology for some reason and history of images and what those mean. So anyway, I want to make that believable. So, all right, so I'm kind of going in my little path there. And what's cool about doing a virtual copy is if I go back in time to see my before and after, remember the shortcut to do that, anyone? The slash, the backslash key, right? Back in time. With a virtual copy, well, let's go to my first image here. Here's the first one. If I go back in time, I go all the way back to color, right? So I can't really tell, is my black and white good? Let's say I, I go here and then I decide, um, like, why well, want more contrast? I can't see what the contrast was one step before, right? But when you do that virtual copy, it, that, that image was born at that state. And so when I go back now, it's just going back to whatever I've done since then. And so, especially in black and white, that's huge, right? Because comparing to color is irrelevant. Color is gone. And color attracts your eyes in different ways. So anyway, nice little tip there, right? Um, as far as something so far that we, we've gotten to.